exhausted. Hello out there and thanks for joining us on Political Platform and uh, we, have, we are glad that you are there to pick up all the reports we have for you. Uh, as usual, we have a, a very long uh, uh, list of items to run through in the last uh, 24 hours, but uh, good to hear from the PDP uh, that uh, the non-elective convention is fixed for August the 12th. Uh, we, along with... Uh, uh, we are there by your body will be there who is already in the house here yeah? will uh, all be taking a look at what they hope to achieve uh, on August the 12th I think uh, uh, if I'm going to let the cut out it is to prepare this paid work for an elective convention so that uh, all things that can be done that cannot be done within the space and time remaining can indeed have some time uh, officially and legally now, the speed of bombings in Meduguri is rising, and so many people are getting worried. Uh, those days, it was that like going, 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 but now it's like every day. It seems normal to hear bomb blasts and deaths in high numbers, and uh, uh, we're getting really uh, worried. The reason is that if there's uh, uh, just a building that is on fire in the city center in London, and just three, four, five, six persons are there. Nigerians here will be shouting on Facebook and be sending messages. Nigerian government officials will be uh, competing with the world leaders on who to send, who first to send the message. But down here, we just have people dying in numbers and we don't really give attention to it. And uh, it does appear it's becoming normal. And if you juxtapose that with the headsmen's clashes, and the deaths that are reported just last night was reported that 37 persons were killed in southern Kaduna, and it just come and it just goes and we just do not uh, uh, think it's important uh, when, when, uh, the attention we give to them is not commensurate with the kind of uh, the kind of expectations we should have and uh, we have the chairman of uh, uh, the Abuja municipal area council in the house Abdullahi Adamu Candido. He's not coming to talk about AMAC and the, the politics of development, although we'll drag him into some of it. But he's coming to respond to issues raised by Ayo Fayoshi, who claim that he has uh, picture, pictorial evidences that the president is in comatose and that he is not uh, capable of running the affairs of Nigeria. And uh, Candido says he is going to challenge him to provide evidence because uh, he is, that is I of I or she can't be correct. So we have him as our guest, but we will not fail to ask him what he's doing with the uh, cattle that is taking over the whole of Abuja by the day, because that is his uh, domain and he is uh, the landlord for everybody, including the president and the cattle themselves. I'm Okiri Agbon Suremi, Mustafa Mohamed is on the platform. Thank you. The spread of bombings in Medugri. The Nigerian army working in the northeast of Kiria are Nigerians. They have relations among the civilian populations at times they narrate what they go through. The Nigerian army is capable. Our air force is capable. What they need to do is to empower them with logistics and welfare. These young and, men... And, are, and maybe maybe what is also lacking, which we have said on this program, as we have been also supported by the... Uh, there is security information. Uh, the kind of network that goes on between the people and everybody because you don't just wait in the marketplace and be waiting for the bomb to arrive yeah but the problem is that you know uh, back of university of meduguri is part of some visa you come all the way from Bama to kondega to university of meduguri into meduguri even my own home is along that that axis is part of some visa the truth of the matter is these people have done very well in the past in Nigeria. all right uh, and if you empower them they can bring an end to this problem they lack welfare that's the information we are getting Okay, Uju Uju is also on the platform this morning. Uju, welcome to the program. Thank you, Ohiri. Ohiri, I, I think that one other area that we could look at, you know, towards uh, solving this problem is let them allow the acting president to 
exercise full powers and take decisions that are critical. Is anybody, at this point. Is fact, anybody well, disallowing? We have, you? we have, we have always, uh, <laughs> you know, come up with this idea of uh, the cabal holding him down. Look at the other, uh, the two cleared ministers have not been sworn in. There are a whole lot of things, you know, that are hanging that makes you wonder what is really going on. I think that that might also be the, the problem. problem, and he should be allowed to take control and do what is needed. Are they by your body rings also right in the house? Thank you, Hira. I think the issue is not whether the, pres uh, the acting president is giving full power or not. The critical issue is that what is the level of intelligence, intelligence and the, yeah, that is the what thing. Is, that's available? These people are known to some people. The people are scared of giving intelligence information to the security agencies. And in the absence of a, a, a well laid out plan for intelligence uh, reports gathering, there is not, not much. There are also human beings. There are no wishes and wizards that can hazard where these people are unless people provide them information. Uh, 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 Dr. Amisha Nakwe, we had a lot of improvement in intelligence gathering. If you look at the work that the military they have done, working with the local uh, JTF, uh, the DSS and all that, they probably would not have had the kind of success they had if there were no intelligence. Maybe it is not enough we are talking about. Well, uh, let me start by saying that the acting president has full powers. If he refuses to use them, it is uh, by his own volition. Uh, but talking about the situation in the North is when the military and the government celebrated the liberation of Sambisa Forest, I sounded it here that they only won the battle, that the war is still on. And the war cannot be won uh, militarily alone. The soft approach that the, uh, uh, the Office of the NSA talked about a long time ago, we must factor it in. Why is it that despite the no huge number of them that have been killed, huge number that are reported to be surrendering, they are still attacking uh, and allegedly uh, kidnapping and abducting uh, uh, female police officers that they showed on, uh, of course, uh, a video the other time, but the Nigerian police uh, discountenanced it. Uh, we need to look at the underlying factors that make terrorists to be bred and be sustained within the communities. We need to take a look at that. Until we do it, this will be a perennial war that will be fought forever. Okay. Let's uh, uh, harvest from you uh, your thoughts, your views on uh, the situation, the way you see it, your reaction to the issues that are uh, on top of the burner in Nigeria, uh, political environments, through political platform at yahoo.com. You can indeed interact uh, with us. Let me just quickly also remind you that uh, you can watch watch uh, the, the program, subscribe and, uh, uh, to our video on YouTube channel, AIT Political Platform. And uh, for those who are familiar now, who have uh, the download in the app uh, from the Google Play, uh, you are able to uh, listen to Repar FM. Uh, 24 7 and you can uh, in addition to hearing political platform you can listen to all the other uh, beautiful exciting uh, programming that we have for you all around the world and for those who are in abuja uh 6 p.m you can watch uh the program ait political platform on the local channel of uh, ait let's go to the mailbox let's see who is talking to us this morning thanks Sohira. welcome to the mail segment um amaka okuru and i am attending kang akipu you're welcome We'll begin with a reaction on the issue in the NHIS, and it's coming from Henry Arunonu from Gariki in Abuja, the mail reads, I thank the platform for bringing up the early NHIS issue yesterday. It needs more in-depth analysis as to who did what. As it is with the modern ministry, so it is with the organization that can guarantee that Nigerians access qualitative health care without incurring any financial hardship. Why is Nigeria's case different? Ghana started their health insurance scheme in 2003 and today covers up to 85% of Ghanaians and despite the bitter genocide in Rwanda, they have picked up their, their pieces and their health insurance covers 96% of their citizens. Though the HMOs are backed by persons of intimidating pedigree, I advocate that Nigerians should arise and speak out and call for an independent inquiry so that whoever has denied poor Nigerians affordable health care should be brought to book. And Ken Oko in Wuse Abuja is reacting to yesterday's analysis on the program. He says your interview yesterday on budget monitoring was a blast. It exposed how our government officials at various levels have used budgeting to enrich themselves. Your analysis on the NHIS issues was no less a thriller. It shows that APC is its own opposition. 
please let's quickly restructure towards true fiscal federalism, a weaker and less cumbersome center, a monocamera National Assembly, and FEC that will be part-time. Other states let governments and commissioners pay their salaries from what they generate internally. This way, we will have less drama in the name of governance. Thanks and God bless Nigeria. And Louis Nelson in Abuja writes on issues in Nigeria's telecom operations. The mail reads, It is amazing that the foreign investors of a telecom company can take a loan of $1.2 billion from nine Nigerian banks and soon after they invest completely from the company. There are so many un unanswered questions. What collateral did they use to secure the loan? Why did the CBN approve the capital flight? Why did the banks not invest? Why are the banks not investigated for possible conflict of interest? Why did NCC keep moot on the matter? In 2016, it was alleged that a telecom company exported more than $18 billion for in five years. Our regulators are the weakest link to our economic development. By my analysis, the telecom companies are not remitting as much as 50% of that. All we talk about is borrowing and putting the future of our children in a debt trap. This issue are crucial to the economy. I call on the media to investigate and inform the public on the true situation. An Odem in Abuja titles this Abuja Street now carnival of cattle. He says, the invasion of cattle in Abuja streets and the, and the battles arising as a result of it is a sign of dysfunctional system of the FCT, of the FCT administration headed by weak leadership. Ironically, there are no grasses on these roads where are the law enforcement agencies? The hazard they pose is so enormous. They constitute road hazards or menis. Apart from the nuisance they have created to the road users, they could be carrying some virus or diseases that could spread easily. The director of Abuja Environmental Protection Board should be relieved of her duty as soon as possible and let a more vibrant and competent Nigerian take charge. And this is how far we can go on the mail segment for today. Do keep sending your mails to us. The route to reach us is political platform at yahoo.com. Busted! They present the popular radio program, Political Platform, on the Ray Power FM network. Ray Power FM Political Platform, now on television. Keep track of the country's polity and be part of the process as they discuss and put political developments in the country into perspective. It's Ray Power Political Platform on AIT Abuja. Thank you so much. When you have all the issues uh, raised uh, concerning Nigeria, you sometimes just get yourself uh, confused where to really begin from. If you take a look at uh, the issues we first of all discussed just now, the spate of bombings, you ask yourself, one hour you can spend all the time talking about them. Now the herdsmen and the clashes and the menace of cattle is one that everybody seems to be getting used to now. Because in the FCT, uh, along the road, the highways, I mean in the central business district, you're going to slow down because the cattle probably sometimes just take over the road. The other issues of uh, economic development, how to move the nation forward, why we are borrowing by the day, the latest statistics uh, is that we are spending so much, over 60% in in, of our revenue is servicing our debt. That is one that will get you the slip off your eyes if you understand what it means. And then we continue to, uh, to take more, more money and borrow more money. Uh, then you probably you just want to ask what is happening to us as a people is it that we cannot sit down talk go to the political terrain you see the crisis that the one has been solved getting solved in pdp i can assure you and i will say that i'm not the one predicting it but it certainly surely go to going to happen give them just another six months there will be one crisis inside the pdp that will come up apc is turned into stress even the government is divided you want to ask what manner of people we are assembled by God in this kind of uh, nation, and uh, can't we really sit down and do it well? Well, let's uh, begin from where we can and uh, try to see how many we can uh, of the issues we can take. When we took on uh, the governor of uh, uh, Ekiti State, uh, he was very blunt, and he spoke as if his wife was actually the one who took the photographs. He said he has. And uh, that he has the photographs, 11 of them, he said, that uh, represents the true state of the president's uh, head. 
and that it is not one anybody can smile about. He said he's deflated and that he's incapacitated and that the president is incapable of even uh, running as a continue as president. Al Haji, uh, Abdullah Adamu Candido, I don't want to make him an analogy yet, except this one, says he didn't find those uh, comments uh, very palatable. Among the so many people who said they have a right of response, we decided to invite him and allow him to come in and, uh, and share with us what he thinks about it. If he himself has been to London, and if he said, if himself as a citizen is happy that he doesn't know the uh, actual position of the state of health, and it is everybody is speculating, and why he thinks Ayofayoshe is wrong. Thank you so much for joining us, Chairman. Thank you very much, Nigerians. Uh, I'm delighted indeed uh, to be here once again. I think uh, the issue that got to do with me responding on the kind of uh, statement credited to Fayoshe is only centered around two items. Okay. When I look at it as either uh, is he constructively criticizing somebody who is sick for now, or is he just uh, making, you know, comments that are out of place? One, he has denigrated his office as a governor, and of course also looking down at the symbol of the country, which is the office of Mr. President. For whatever it is, sickness is never applied. Nobody applied to be sick. And the president of this country is not above being sick when he is supposed to be sick. And therefore, as a Nigerian, true citizen of this country, and a person occupying an exalted office, he needed to be so constructive enough, and he needed to be so evidence enough, in a manner that what, Nigeria. What exactly? What exactly is the? What 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 did you find wrong with the at uh, of Iowa? What I find wrong is that for you to come out to say somebody is in, in is, is in a life, life support, support. Yes. you needed to have evidence. But he said, he said he has. He doesn't have any. Sincerely, you see, radicalism is one thing, okay? There is, there is no wisdom to being radical. That is one aspect I see in this man. And anybody can be radical. Now, do you have evidence that the president is not in life? Of support? course. Nigerians should also begin to heave a sigh of relief because this, his wife, who is more confident, who is the closest person to him, has visited this man and may never wish to wish her husband doom. She has come out to say this man is okay, he's recuperating, he's getting better, and sooner. Are you very lip, are you very lip believe I her. believe in that because for me, if, if my wife should go to the public to say my husband is good, he's fine, I think the, the, people the, should believe the, Don't you think that Nigerians good. have a right to uh, have some communication with the president? We hear the president uh, call some people, he writes to them, but the father of the nation not uh, talking to the people do he at some point the Salah message was in uh, our language, but they say they want audiovisual. They want to connect with their president to see for themselves. Well, I I agree with what I, I I agree with this position. But what I'm saying that Fire of Fire she does not have the capacity to speak for Mr. President as it is because he has all the men that are supposed to speak for Mr. President, and they have come out to say, well, his wife has gone to see him and they believe in what he's saying. No. And I think Nigeria should also believe that concept. This man in Fayoshi, okay, he's, I think he's, he's, he's been a publicist. He just likes to be publicized. And so responding to him sometimes is been making him to be too important. For me, I feel it's, it's better we tell him that enough is enough. You now, shouldn't be now, going this way. Now, now there's, there's a middle point here, a okay. meeting point here between the camps. Now, uh, it is not just the wife of the president that said, it was not just the wife of the president that said, look, my mm -hmm. husband is uh, recovering well is fine and thank Nigerians for their prayers. Yeah. The acting president also came back to say, look, I have met with him. Everybody knew he was going. They said the acting president was going to London. He went. He said he met with him for one hour and that the president is recovering very well. But I of she says they are all telling lies. Okay, who is more better in a position to say Mr. President is well? Is it I of she or even the Mr. President? I think I have a belief that this man needed to be taken to psychiatric hospital. Let us examine <laughs> this man in a proper manner. That's is he really well? No, I, I think <laughs> you're <laughs> driving it too far. <laughs> no, uh, he has, as a citizen, he has <laughs> rights to express. He has a right, <laughs> but, he, he has a right <laughs> but he should say it in the modest form. This is Mr. President, the, the, the authority over the affairs of this country. At least you must, he has to respect this office, he has to respect the age. And of course, like I said, you never can apply to be sick. He too can be sick. But you are aware that uh, 
it is not as if Nigerians are wishing Mr. President sick. That it may also be out of care and great concern that people are making that. In fire share is not out of care. There is hate in it. That yes, is the it truth is. of the matter. There is hate. That is a, is, is fine. It is no longer co uh, criticism of the government of, or, or the set of affairs of this country. It is personal. He, he has personal life. We also say that, that the, 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 the statements credited to uh, Muhammad Buhari in yes. 2010, where he asked the National Assembly to impeach the then Sikh president, late Umar Musayar Adwa, mm. who was driven by hate. Well, it, it, uh, I, I wouldn't like to go into that aspect, but sincerely, we are speaking about fire chef's case now okay. and i'm bent on this fact that this man i think his state house of assembly should better examine this 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 i think if it is a, if it is I, I of fire chef that i spoke with if you invite i of fire chef to a psychiatric hospital he will definitely submit himself to it i think he, he better he, do he, he, he would he will say he doesn't mind <laughs> i'm doing my body yeah mr <laughs> chair let, let, let's go a little bit you okay. have made your point clear you are you are a civil society person before you went to politics. Exactly. You play active role in Abuja, particularly on the platform of community action for popular participation. Exactly, sir. Now you are in government, and there are challenges in Abuja. The issue of uh, cows moving freely in the street is there. I, I don't you feel challenged by this problem that is mounting? Refuse everywhere. Sincerely, I want us to also examine this fact that uh, here we come into a system in a bad situation financially. Okay. Of course, the issue of uh, cattle rearing into the city is not is very alarming. It's not too good for you know for anybody's uh, eye to see. But unfortunately, uh, are you, uh, is your, is, uh, the, S uh, the area council that I preside, okay. okay, has little to do with that. It is an agency of the federal uh, that, FCT, yeah. that is uh, AEPB that is in charge. Of in, ensuring they that they have uh, any role here that's as chairman of ours uh, is to in, uh, is, is, uh, is to complement, complement the effort of what they are doing. And as far as area council is concerned, we, have, we were able to put in place what we call AMAC uh, martial guards. And this martial guard have been sent to their various ward to checkmate these excesses. In the city center here, we have over 20 25 AMAC martials that will also in, uh, ensure that this kind of uh, rubbish, they move around. Yes, they, they move around to ensure that all these kind of things are checkmated. But essentially, this, this job is supposed to be that of the uh, environmental. We learned that 58 uh, cows have been uh, arrested with the owner of the park. Five, 500, actually. No, five, no, five, 50, 500. 500 okay. January and July, there are 500 uh, cows. They say if you go to the area 10. Uh, uh, sports, sports complex. Sports complex. Okay. They actually uh, there, and the aid to the minister said it's in an effort to uh, prevent the uh, them from entering to the city center and taking the cow. I think I think one one good thing that the government is supposed to do is to ensure that uh, they do the needful. Probably most of these cows entering the city doesn't belong to the to the headers in the bush. Yeah. They belong to the you know, city owner, the elite. They own this thing. I think measures should be put in place. The, the government should to come find out the real to owners. fight. The, you know, they should come out to do the needful by ensuring that if you are an elite and you have a cow, please send it to the bush because they, they don't have a place in the city here. I think that is what is expected. Of Unfortunately, the when they go to the bush, they go to eat the crops. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is one thing. <laughs> They go to because, because if you if you watch the visuals which mm. uh, Dr. Amichi Anakwe uh, showed to Nigerians yesterday on AIT, mm. the vision of the University of Abuja uh, by the cattle students and cattle inside the yeah. same uh, environment competing for yeah, and they said it was as a result of the clash with the farmers in the bush that the cattle rearers now came to the green of the university. That place they feel they were secured. From the locals who were hunting them, who were you know uh, harassing them in in the bush. So <laughs> I think it goes beyond just uh, something. Some some persons have have suggested that look, can we talk of uh, ranching. localizing ranching? Put put them all out and let people invest. And fortunately enough, the citizens should be told that the minister of the federal capital territory, Malamus Mohamed Bello, is up to the task. A committee has already been put in place, and they are working very fast to ensure that this team is nipping the board okay. by the grace of God. All right, let's, let's, just, let's, let's just take a break. You busted. They present the popular radio program Political Platform on the Ray Power FM network. Ray Power FM Political Platform now on television. Keep track of the country's polity and be part of the process as they discuss and put political developments in the country into perspective. 
its Ray Power political platform on AIT Abuja. Thank you so much for remaining with us. Uh, Abdullahi Adamu Kandido is not just chairman of uh, uh, Abuja Municipal Area Council. His background is uh, community service, was in the community action for popular participation. I remember uh, our colleague, our late uh, colleague, they were working together talking about uh, Ima Ima all of us were uh, working to mobilize Nigerians then. But he has, he's on the other side now. Uh, just before we go, because we have just like a minute or two to go, uh, uh, Chairman. Uh, the politics. Let's talk a little of uh, politics. The APC, PDP. You are in APC. I'm in APC. Are you happy about Nigeria? The politics in Nigeria. Are you particularly happy? I'm never. I can never be a happy person with the way things are going. But sincerely, Nigeria should be try. Should should be able to dif uh, differentiate between two, you know, side of the coins. One, a West full government for 16 years that brought us. That the, whose whose <laughs> whose whose results and actions are the consequences of today's uh, uh, situation that we, are, we found ourselves in, and of course the two-year corrective regime of Mr. President, that is the APC today. Now, you can even never equate a child of 16 years and a child of two years. This government that we succeeded messed up everything. And that is the truth of the matter. And Nigerians must begin to be and told. And we have been shouting this mess up for two years? Yes, of course. I mean, that's the, that's the problem. You see, that it's, it's, just a, it's just a replica I, I, of saying... I, I, I gave an analogy somewhere. and You have a dancer removed from the dance floor because he's not dancing well. Yes. And you are asked to go and dance. And you get to the dancing floor, you are complaining of the former dancer, you are complaining of the rough floor. Instead of trilling your audience... We must tell ourselves the naked truth. And that is you never can destroy... It. You can destroy this house in just a second. But let me tell you, to put, to, you know, to put it back to use, it will give you time. It's a very painful situation. Whose consequences is the maladministration of the past? And that is the truth of the matter. We are asking Nigeria to be very patient with APC. But the, Mr. Chairman, is, are we not overplaying the blame game? Because even a child of two years, you know, should at least have sat down, started standing, and of course started walking. And I think that there is, have been signs that, and that is what we are doing. Okay, and that is what the walking. APC is doing. <laughs> we have been walking. trying to put everything in place. Of course, forget about the little issues, be, even, 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 even the party that I belong to. There are issues, of course. Yeah. And you know you, you must expect issues. But down with these issues, the consequences, I keep saying, is that what we are facing, what we are facing today is, 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 is the value. We have uh, Abdullahi Adamu Kanido, chairman of Abuja Municipal Area Council, joining us in the analysis uh, this morning. My name is Okiri Agon Sure. We must go now. When we come back in the next 24 hours, we'll have more. Uh, for you and remember to drop us a line and if you have to watch uh, go to our YouTube channel uh, AIT political platform and then you can watch and those in Abuja Council see us on AIT at 6 p.m. And those on radio please keep watching uh, keep listening by downloading the uh, the app and then you're able to listen to repair 24 hours a day anywhere you are here at Bonsurim you have a wonderful time out there Busted.